Thanks for the support as a channel member, Jack Sorbers. Boys and girls, indulge me while I take a moment to thank this episode's sponsor, Super Club Soccer. In the very unlikely event you're not already familiar with it, Super Club Soccer is a free-to-play turn-based football game available on Steam and via the link at the top of the description below. Once you've got the game downloaded, the fun begins because each player in a team is individually controlled by a different human player. You can create your own character, play them in whatever position you want. You can train them in an array of different attributes so you can tailor them to how you want to play the game. And then you can team up with your friends and play against people from all over the world. Bottom line, you get to create your own team, join up with all your mates, and go and take on other people at a football game. It's fun. And like I said before, you can download it now for free, straight off of Steam, or preferably, you know, supporting the channel and all that via the link at the top of the description below. I've been working with Super Club Soccer on the channel for a little while now, and I've had lots of positive feedback from people who've gone out, tried the game, and really enjoyed it. They're originally just trying it to be nice to old Kev, which is encouraged. But they've actually gone on and enjoyed the game and now play it quite regularly. So go and give it a try. You've got nothing to lose. It is free to download. It is awesome. And it will make me super duper happy deep down inside if you go and use it via my link. Down there, boys and girls. Hello, I'm going to part 10 of Rebuilding Barcelona. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two big, big games for you. We're at home against Atletico Madrid in La Liga and at home against Manchester United in the Champions League. Since you were last with me, um, that's not my normal custom view. Idiots, need my circles since you were last with me. We've won every game. We've had a really solid start to the season. But as you can see, we've not actually played anyone any good yet. Severe aside, I guess they'd probably have something to say about that. But they're not they're not top tier, are they? We've got two top tier teams today. And we're really going to get to test ourselves and see just how good we really are. The Liga is looking solid. Those six wins from six. All is good there. Alex Grimaldo, the uh, the unexpected best player in the league so far. Um, and Isco proving to be particularly effective with assists. I said we wanted to bring him in as our Coutinho replacement. And that's exactly what he's doing at the moment, which is great to see. Our Champions League group. And um, we've got Man United, FC Copenhagen and Marseille. We beat Copenhagen in the first match. As you can see, because of the World Cup, Champions League games coming thick and fast. We've basically got... One a week through September and October. The group is settled by this by the second day in November before we then hit the break for the World Cup. So any injuries are going to be particularly significant and squad rotation is going to be crucial. I'm glad we've got a proper squad this season with some strength in depth. On the topic of the squad, there is a little bit more transfer news as well. We finally got rid of Sergio Busquets. Um, and specifically his wages. I mean, we didn't particularly want to get rid of him. We just wanted to get rid of his wages. Um, I've got the wrong season on there. Um, we let him go on a free transfer in the end. We got to deadline day, and I was just getting desperate. So we let him go on a free transfer to Shakhtar. We're also paying £50,000 a week towards his... or oh, £56,000 a week towards his wages for the rest of the season. Um, but it's certainly a lot cheaper than his £275,000 a week wages we were paying before. Shakhtar had room to sign him because we actually signed a central midfielder off of Shakhtar. Um, Marcos Antonio is a 22-year-old Brazilian under-23 international, um, three-star current ability. My scouts reckoned he had five-star potential. My coaches have other ideas, um, but he is considered a world-class midfielder and was playing out at Shakhtar. And I think between him and and Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, Hector Herrera. Um, we've got three players who are perfectly adequate to play alongside Frankie de Jong while we wait for Pedri to decide what he's going to be and decide whether he's going to stop getting injured. There's a few squad spots or team spots Pedri could push into, but until he stops picking up constant injuries, we can't really rely on him for any of those positions. As you can see, he is actually fit and playing today, which is going to be nice to see. So this is the team for the Atletico Madrid game. Um, we've got a few injuries and suspensions. You know how these start to stack up. Uh, Rudiger, Memphis Depay, Tammy Abraham, Ihataran, none of them fully fit. Um, Isco suspended for this game as well because he got sent off for being an absolute madman. It was his only poor moment since arriving, really. Um, six goal contributions in six games and averaging a 7.5. We'll definitely take that. 
I don't really know why he wasn't getting any game time at Real Madrid. Only started 10 games for Real Madrid last season. You would think a player who's capable of coming in and doing that would get a little bit more game time, but alas, not. So this is the team for the Atletico game. Um, we're still going with Testagan in goal. I'm using Livakovic as a Champions League goalkeeper. So he played against Copenhagen. Um, we'll play him against Manchester United as well, and hopefully that'll be enough to keep him happy. I don't know that it will, but we can always swap that over later in the season and give him a run in the in La Liga and use to Stegen in the Champions League. I've got to find a way to rotate and keep them both happy while they're both at the club. And with no takers for Testagen, it's really, really important. I keep Livakovic happy because he's going to be our long-term keeper. Um, but Testagen has to play while he's here for now. So Testagen in goal, a back four of Grimaldo, Sula, Garcia and Aspilicueta. De Jong and Herrera in midfield, Fatty, Pedri and Oxley chamberlain behind Aguero up front. Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, another one who's come in and looked like a pretty useful signing. One goal, one man of the match, a 7.08. A lot of these new signings have hit the ground running, although a lot of that you can probably take with the proverbial pinch of salt because, like I say, we've not really played anybody any good yet. So these two games today are going to be a real test of where this new-look squad is. I don't think I don't think anyone would try and convince you that our first eleven is as good as the first 11 we had this time last year. We've taken out the likes of Dembele, Busquets, um, Coutinho, uh, who else has gone? Obviously, if you go back a little bit further, Griezmann, Messi, all these players have left, uh, Jordi Alba. We've replaced them with Pedro, uh, with, um, uh, Chamberlain, Herrera, Grimaldo, Azpilicueta. They're not quite at the same standard. You've got Tammy Abraham knocking around the squad. You've got... Pedro sat on the bench for us. But I do think I do think we're good enough. I hope we're good enough. We're going to find out today if, we, if we're good enough. Please let us be good enough or else that will be very sad. I'd probably take a draw today because as long as we stay unbeaten for as long as we possibly can, I think there's a very good chance we end up winning the league again. And against these bigger teams, I don't necessarily mind drawing. Um, obviously, it'll be nice to pick up a win, um, so we'll try and motivate the players to do that. But I mean, it's been a it's been a very nothing game so far. 0.22 xG between the two of us in the first hour of the game. Have we is this a Serie A match all of a sudden? What's gone on here? Um, Ansu Fati is tired, so we're going to take him off. Um, who have we got to bring on who can play out wide on that left hand side? Nobody, um, but we can bring Demir on. Um, and Demir can then go out onto the right-hand side. Oxley chamberlain on the left. That works for me. I think this is a... Is this a first appearance of the season for Yusuf Demir? Um, I think it might be. I think he was, I think he had a slight knock earlier on in the season. I think this is his... We can find out. These things are tracked. Oh, he has had one previous substitute appearance. But yeah, a little bit of a slow start to the season for him. But hopefully can start to push himself into the team now. And is this a debut for Marcos Antonio? It is. Um, oh, in fact, no, he played. He came off the bench against Copenhagen. Um, but a league debut for Marcos Antonio coming in alongside Herrera. So very new look central midfield. We're going to offer a little bit of encouragement. And Oxley chamberlain now tiring as well. We don't really have any more wide players. For and Aguero is having a terrible game. This is where I'd love to be able to bring on uh, Tammy Abraham. As it is, we're going to bring on Pedro with his beautiful jawline. And I hope that that jawline can get on the end of a cross and find a goal. Probably shouldn't have left Pedri on for the full 90 minutes when he's so injury prone and recovering from his injuries. But it's fine. I said I'd be happy with a draw. We've picked up a draw. We're still unbeaten. That's okay. In games like that, that's okay. I'm furious, apparently. I mean, there's two, there's two sides to me. There's a the side you see and the side they see. And we like to keep them separate. But now we're going to play Manchester United, where, to be honest, again, I'd probably be okay with a draw. I think finishing second in this group would probably be okay. But it would be nice to beat them. So a few changes for the Manchester United game then. Isn't it nice to be able to rotate players around a little bit? So Livakovic comes in in goal, as mentioned. Dest is in at right back. We're going with De Jong and Herrera in midfield. Tammy Abraham coming in on the left wing. Isco in for Pedri. Um, now he's not suspended. And then Fatty and Aguero and make up the rest of the attack. I am a little bit worried we might have hit that point with Sergio Aguero where he's not going to be very effective anymore. He's already not playing to anywhere near the standard of last season. Part of that could be because I've upset him and um, by trying to offer him out, but he is now four games without a goal 
Um, if Aguero doesn't start scoring soon, I think we really might start regretting not pushing to get rid of him a little bit harder. I mean, the fact that he's surplus to requirements on the transfer list could well be having an impact on how well he's playing. Shall we, shall we take him off the transfer list and try and cheer him up a little bit? Is that, is that maybe, that may be something we could do if he changes playing time back to that? Um, he's still not happy, but maybe that will get a performance out of him. There's no point in being on the transfer list when the transfer window's um, closed. We can worry about that again in January. And I think I do, I would like to be moving Sergio Aguero on in January for, I mean, anything. We don't, similar to the Busquets deal, he's earning so much money. I'm not even necessarily interested in getting a transfer fee for him, just getting him out of the club and then seeing what kind of strikers might be available who are going to be out of contract at the end of the season. I really am going to be hoping that Tammy Abraham comes good and we can go with Abraham for the second half of the season with Pedro as our backup and then potentially uh, bring someone else in to compete with the two of them in the summer. And I'm not against going six months with just those two and working with whatever we've got in the uh, in the youth setup. I mean, Ansu Fati can play up front if need be. What a goal from Dest. I tell you what, that's two excellent goals he's scored now this season. Both of them in videos. He is really trying to show off for you lot. He very much likes to perform in front of the cameras. And similar to what we had with uh, Jabril So last season, Dest only scores screamers. Um, David De Gea is going to be a little bit upset that he's done so poorly with that. But you know what? We don't care. We're 1-0 up against Manchester United. And this will go a long way towards helping us top this group. Abraham's been absolutely clattered there by the Manchester United defender. And we get nothing for it. But Isco comes back and wins the ball back. And Abraham now playing it across to Fatty, And he's got Aguero alongside him. Ansu Fatty playing it back to Dest, who's going to have another go, I think. Dest beats his man. And he's waiting to beat another one. Plays it back to De Jong. Somebody crossed the football. Dest. Somebody crossed the football. De Jong. There we go. We finally get across. It's back to Dest. Shoot. Herrera. Tammy Abraham. And there he is with his second goal of the season in the team on the left wing today. Mainly because I want to keep him fit and happy for when he inevitably succeeds Sergio Aguero as our starting, starting striker. Which could be within the next few matches. Uh, the the plan was for it to happen when Aguero left, but if Aguero is going off the boil, uh, Tammy Abraham very much on the boil. So we might end up making that decision sooner rather than later. Similar to what we did with Busquets in the last couple of games before we sold him, which you didn't see because I did all that off camera. But I'd actually stopped playing him anyway because I was afraid of accidentally playing him 25 times. <laughs> so I'd kind of just dropped him out of the team and... I don't know if that was what finally gave him the impetus to leave the club. Maybe his view was there's no point in me leaving if I'm starting every match. And Aguero might be thinking along similar lines. So maybe maybe uh, a little bit of time watching from the sidelines as we approach January will be enough for him to be convinced that it's time to move on. Of course, there's not a lot of game time between now and January, even though it's only September. Um, things close up in about six weeks for the World Cup, which is it's a crazy season. Cristiano Ronaldo's still playing then. He's still scoring goals, is he? He must be about 50 years old at this point. Um, Jaden Sancho, down the right-hand side, it's a very good cross, and it's a very good header from Ronaldo. I imagine that's going to be quite a common Manchester United goal, uh, both in-game and in real life over the next year or two. Um, Garcia then, at the back, decides to dribble it forward, plays it into Isco, Isco to Ansu Fati, who has got Tammy Abraham making a run. And, oh, he's tried to open himself up Thierry Henry style. And he's not quite Thierry Henry. And rather than, I mean, I would have preferred to see him drill that across goal and stick it in the back of the net rather than trying to be fancy. If you're going to try and be fancy, you better hope it comes off. It didn't. And I hope we don't end up ruining that miss from Tammy Abraham. An hour gone. We have comfortably been the better team in this game. But that Ronaldo goal... Certainly keeps United in this. Cross from Fatty, looking for nobody really. I mean, it's a poor cross. De Gea comfortably getting a hold of it and then releasing towards Sancho. But some strange play leads it all the way back to Varane and then Tolisso for Manchester United. Mason Greenwood is in here though and Livakovic is equal to it and makes the save. It's very nice having two very good goalkeepers. I'm certainly enjoying that very much. 
Um, they've got Gaia as their left back. Interesting. Um, that would have been an option for us. I imagine he was a lot more than Grimaldo cost. Grimaldo very much the budget option, I would think. Um, Isco has made a made a foul. That made a foul. That's why I'm not a professional commentator. He made a foul, and while he was trying to do a football, um, right, I'm going to take Aguero off again. Um, I'm going to put Abraham up front, I think. If we bring Demir on, put Abraham up front. He is tiring, so I don't necessarily want to leave him up there for the entirety of the rest of the game. But he can go up there for now. I see the other two players. The two players I've just moved around are the other two who are tiring. Fatty and Abraham. We've got Oxlade-Chamberlain. I guess Oxlade-Chamberlain can come on for Fatty for now. And then give it five or ten minutes. Give, give Abraham five or ten minutes up front. And then Pedro can come on towards the end of the match and see if he can uh, use his beautiful jawline to force a goal for us. Uh, Dest then, on the right-hand side. He's got... Uh, uh, no, it's Demir, not Oxlade-Chamberlain. Oxlade-Chamberlain's on the left at the moment. So it's De it's Demir who is ahead of him. He's not needed him. Cross comes in. Abraham is there, but he can't keep his header down. Not quite as effective as the Sancho to Ronaldo move that Manchester United pulled off. The almost as famous Dest to Abraham. Um, it will be as famous. Looks like Ronaldo is now playing much deeper for Manchester United, unless he's just dropped very deep to pick up the ball there. And Chamberlain gives the ball away to Sancho. And this is problematic for us. And Greenwood is in and it's 2-2. And we have let them back into the game. We are going to make that change I talked about before now. And we need the energy up front. So Pedro's going to come on for Abraham for the final 15 minutes or so. I did say going in, we'd be happy with a draw in this game. I guess I still would be. But we were 2-0 up. We'd, we'd quite like to come away with all three points. We're definitely not as far behind the the bigger Premier League clubs as I thought we would be. Um, the fact that Manchester United are back in Europe again suggests they're fully recovered in the Premier League now and probably um, having a lovely old time over there with Ronaldo and Sancho and Varane and all these other boys knocking about the place. Right, last chance probably for a winning goal. Grimaldo down the left-hand side um, couldn't get his crossing, but Herrera is there backing him up. Herrera playing it across to De Jong. And now Isco's got time and space. Plays it into Dest again. Oh, I thought he was going to do another str screamer. But rather than just hitting it, he's tried to float it over De Gea from far too close to the goal. It was the wrong idea. And I think that was a big chance for us. But Herrera is trying to give us one more. And it's Pedro. Not really got any kind of support. Although he's spotted Oxlade Chamberlain, who's in and scores. The former Liverpool man is there for the goal against Manchester United in the 93rd minute to make it Barcelona 3, Manchester United 2. A second goal of the season already for Oxlade Chamberlain, who has played in probably five different positions for us already. It's so useful having such a versatile player if we can keep him fit. He's still only 28. We've got a superstar on our hands there and we are top of our group. We've beaten Manchester United. I think what we've learned today is this squad is probably good enough to keep, to maintain the goal of keeping Barcelona competitive. We're continuing to lower the debt and we're still mixing it up with the bigger clubs in Europe. This is very positive stuff. Right, I think what we'll probably do for the next episode, remember, no episodes tomorrow or Sunday. Um, we only do this series Monday to Friday, so we'll be back on Monday at 4pm. I think what we'll likely do is play the last couple of games before the World Cup um, and then the next day come back and show you what happened in the World Cup and uh, get stuck into January and transfers and all that kind of stuff again. So um, fingers crossed, everything continues to run relatively smoothly. And we're probably going to see Manchester United again in the next episode. And there's no Real Madrid game before the 18th of January this season, which seems seems like they're backloading our season quite a lot. We play them again right at the end of the season. That's quite a difficult run in Real Madrid and then Valencia. Hopefully the league's already won by then. But yeah, we will, uh, we'll be back on Monday. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.